In his new book, The 60% Solution, Rethinking Healthcare, author Todd Furness breaks down healthcare problems and solutions to free the industry to do its job. There are five major constraints. Poor use of primary care, inconsistent accounting and incompatible IT, hidden pricing, restricted health savings accounts, and hyper-regulation. Hi, this is Todd Furness, and welcome to today's Thursday Brief. I want to talk a little bit about lessons learned from COVID from a leadership perspective. And we're going to talk about sort of the things that we did well and perhaps the things we could do better next time. Not necessarily to say that we're disparaging anybody or anybody's efforts, but rather genuinely how we can evolve into a next generation of leadership. Uh, first of all, I want to really reach out to Steve Danes. Steve is the senator, junior senator from Montana, fantastic guy, and really was very prescient in understanding the needs of pharmaceutical companies in terms of getting a product to market quickly in the form of vaccinations. So what Senator Danes did was make certain that the pharmaceutical companies were not at risk in the event that they had created production run capabilities in their manufacturing facilities, and yet if the drugs that they were pursuing didn't get FDA approval, they wouldn't lose all the money associated with setting up those manufacturing runs. That was just really remarkable, and it allowed several months, to, if not years, to be shaved off of the manufacturing process for the pharmaceutical companies. That saved lives, and Senator Danes is to be praised for having saved lives as a result of that prescience. I also want to uh, recognize uh, Dr. Janet Woodcock. Uh, Dr. Woodcock was very important in getting the vaccinations approved without compromising safety. She was very helpful in uh, making certain that the regulatory arm of the federal government did not overwhelm the speed with which we needed to move in order to get vaccinations to market. And she did a fantastic job. Now, there are a couple of areas where we learned some lessons that were hard lessons. One is while we got uh, drugs developed and approved pretty quickly, in fact, in very, very quickly, I would say we didn't do as well when we got to distribution. So we had a problem when our model of federalism says that the state governments and the federal governments have to work together and that state governments have to do certain things and federal government has to do certain things. As a result of our contemporary version of federalism, what happens is the, the federal government said, hey, I'm handing this off to you, state government. It's now your job to go uh, the next step and get vaccinations really into people's bodies so that they can heal or be prevented from getting, uh, uh, getting the COVID, vac uh, get the COVID uh, virus itself. So how can we do that better next time? I think better coordination, better communication, and also making sure that there are uh, there is budgetary support in the state governments to roll out uh, this, uh, whatever vaccinations are needed. But I think beyond that, there's another issue, which is we have to use uh, a variety of distribution methods, meaning not just federal government or state government, but also uh, commercial entities and f including things like pharmacies, uh, churches, uh, organizations that have been set up for rapid testing and rapid vaccinations that are public-private partnerships and a variety of others. We can't be limited to simply one model because one model isn't going to work for anybody, for everybody and we know that. So we have to have as many models as we can thoughtfully and um, financially uh, roll out uh, without compromising the overall needs of the community we're trying to address. So it, the, to the extent that we can do more with distribution, create better distribution models, and more rapidly develop those distribution models, I think we're going to be uh, better off. The last thing is communication. I think we could have done a better job with communication for a whole bunch of reasons. First of all, I would submit to you that the first issue with communication is the message itself. The message itself should have been, hey, this is a new disease. We don't know much about it. We're going to learn as we go. And we're going to communicate with you in real time as we learn. Uh, we're going to employ science along the way. But we also recognize that science is, going to be, is not going to be able to give us all the answers we need as quickly as we need them. And so there will be times when we're going to have to make judgment calls. In the course of this, because this disease is so new, we're going to have to figure out uh, some things that are gonna work and some things that are not gonna work. And we're gonna have to recover from those things that don't work. 
And we have to give leaders the permission and the, 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 the leeway to make uh, those kinds of decisions because at the end of the day, one of their jobs is to exercise their judgment based on the information they have, which is likely better than the information we have. So this, the nature of the communication from inception needs to be far more transparent. The second thing is we need to, from a communication perspective, is we need to roll out information quickly, but using the media that our recipients are most likely to use. So it may be traditional media for many. It may be uh, something as, uh, as random as TikTok for others or some other social media platform. But we need to look at a variety of media that are able to distribute the message in a variety of ways to get to as much of our population as is possible. And then lastly, this cannot be only about one person or two persons or three persons uh, in order to get the message out. We have to use people who are influential to different demographics and different socioeconomic groups in order to get the message to them. So for some, the president, when the president speaks or when the head of the CDC speaks or when a, a, another elected official speaks, uh, that's gonna be very important and that's gonna be well received by a certain audience. But for others, they're going to say, look, I don't really trust those people or I don't know those people or I don't feel comfortable with those people. Uh, and so I would rather have somebody who's an influencer who I relate to in a different way. If they get comfortable with it, I'll get comfortable with it. And so influencers take on a new role and can play a, a vital and pivotal role there as well. And then another flavor of, in, of influencers would include celebrities. Some people look up to sports stars or media stars and other forms of celebrity to, to guide them. And they take advice and, and uh, they follow in their footsteps. Uh, but whatever form of influencer we can tap into to get the message out as ubiquitously as possible is the kind of thing we need to do. So again, just to recap, we could have done, we, we did a, a very good job in protecting big pharma and getting the, the messages out, the vaccinations manufactured quickly and through the approval process quickly. That helps everybody. And I think that the technologies that we've uncovered there are going to be uh, yielding big fruit for a long time to come. Uh, it may be one of the biggest developments in all of healthcare, uh, certainly in, for, for generations. Uh, the second thing is we need to be transparent in our communication. Uh, I'm sorry, the second thing is we need to be better at distribution using all the distribution models that we have available. And the third thing is we be, need to be far better with communication in terms of the transparency, the message, uh, the messenger, and the media. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick little lessons, set of lessons learned. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, I hope others find it helpful too, and hopefully we'll never have to use them, but uh, in, the un in the unlikely event that we do, uh, I hope that we can take these lessons and really employ them the next time around. Thank you so much for your time. This is Todd Furness. If you like this, uh, these videos and these uh, five minute or so Thursday briefings, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much.